All right, guys, it's Jesse with Iowa Audio Reviews. Gonna be looking at another topping DAC again. Uh, I've done a handful of these, I've had a handful of these. This one is the topping E50 we're at now. Um, it's, it seems like about every couple months or every year or so, uh, they come out with a new one. They just keep taking the specs just a little better and a little better and a little better every year. Um, and even, uh, we've been at a point of super low distortion for a while now, but they just keep getting even better and better. Um, but we'll get into that in a minute. This one, like most of the other ones, comes with the, uh, generic remote that comes with a lot of, uh, well, a lot of audio gear and other electronics now, but it's a good remote, works well, fits in the hand well, all that. No glossy plastic, uh, buttons feel good as usual does everything you need it to do i've had a couple i have a couple of these from some smsl stuff as well and i've had them around for a couple of years now and have not really had any issues with them and then far as your connections that they're going to include is uh you get your uh usb i believe that's usb a to b or male to female uh, included and you get a usb to power because it does not include a power brick so you're going to need an extra cell phone brick uh, around, and they recommend, uh, they want you to be a 5 volt. So uh, I believe it states you can power it off of just a USB port on your computer, like a laptop. So I think USB 2.0 is, uh, is 5 volt, so USB 3 would be fine as well. Um, or you can use an old, uh, as long as it's a 5 volt, you can use an old phone power cord and all the amazing specs listed and achieved with this DAC and like all these other uh, uh, DACs are done with just basic you know just basic cables there's no fancy schmancy shielded eagle tiers made in a tower uh, you know on some mountain fancy cable to achieve these super uh, high performance numbers that they get out of these um, so yeah, but yeah, hey, if you like pretty expensive cables, fine, whatever, just saying. Just like all the other ones, nice anodized aluminum box, comes in black, silver, red, or blue. Uh, can't guarantee that all those colors will be available all the time, you might have to shop around. This one, since I forgot to do it at the very beginning, we're just going to drop it in now, it was sent to me by APOS. I don't, uh, you know, like usual, I don't get to keep it. I just get to try it out, and then I send it back. Um, but uh, if you like audio gear, stuff like this, go over and check out APOS's website. It's a very nice website. They have some cool features, like 45-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. If you just want to try something out and see if you like it, um, you know, you, get, you can buy it, try it for 45 days. It's just not your thing, man. You can box it back up, send it back. Uh, price match guarantee and I believe a live free live chat so if you got some questions you can hop on there and they got people on there that can uh, help you figure out what you need or what you're trying to do so yeah check out uh, apost.com I'll put it in the link if you want you know if you're tired of always looking on uh, just Amazon and eBay and there might be a few other websites that are uh, that uh, are like official topping or SMSL yada yada dealers uh, APOS is one of those official dealers. So, because I know sometimes on eBay, um, there are people that do try to sell fakes, uh, unsurprisingly, I guess. But anyway, all metal enclosure, no ventilation needed. Some nice, uh, thick, soft rubber feet. Um, yep, E50 black bottle. And then, uh, the layout and everything is pretty much all about the same as a lot of the other ones. The inputs, outputs, uh, not maybe not all of them. Some of the lower models won't have all the same uh, inputs. Oops, that's not the one I want to need. I'm going to plug it in here so we can look at the screen after I already went and put all these cords away. And, uh, well, let's see. Let's turn it on so we can see the screen. There we go. I do like toppings. This is very mild. Uh, amber color, I guess, and then as you can see, some of your other options here show up in the white while everything else is amber. Uh, 
Yeah, it's just like all the other ones. I'm not going to go through all the different sound modes and function. It's all listed um, very well in the user manual on how to switch through the different modes and all that. Um, did I say uh, just DAC? Because technically this is a preamp DAC. It, has, it does have a preamp built into it. You can bypass the preamp. You can set it to a fixed voltage. Or you can change it and use the, the preamp or AKA volume. So if you were... Uh, wanted to power something like a, a you know a crown or QSC power amp or just some sort of uh, power amp that doesn't have its own pre or whatever you can use this to preamp an amplifier or preamp some monitor speakers that you have your gain set everything on and then you preamp them from this or whatever now we've seen the screen here I'm going to jump into we'll go start going down the line on some of the specs here yes next gen specs uh they've pushed the distortion all the way down now to point zero 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 nine percent and a dynamic range of 126 db which is just that's just getting incredible on the other side to achieve full 24 bit dynamic range you'd have to hit 144 db so uh, I'll be mentioning it in the specs as we go, but a lot of these DACs and stuff that say they support 24-bit or 32-bit or whatever, that doesn't mean they can actually output that much dynamic range in the analog signal. They can decode 24-bit files and 32-bit files, which there really is no 32-bit for playback, but um, even if you have 24-bit files, this will decode them but once they're decoded, the analog output stage, I believe it is, um, once it gets switched back, switched to analog from digital, uh, it's only capable, and I don't want to say only capable of 126 dB, because that's really good. But still, even DACs like this, I still don't think there is a DAC out there um, that can achieve 144 dB of dynamic range, which is what you're going to need to truly say it's your, uh, you know... Uh, putting out 100 or 24 bit audio, but even then, there's not an amplifier that will do it. And then, even then, I think if you take into consideration distortion levels of speakers, aren't that good either. So, uh, it's almost that true 24 bit audio beginning, uh, you know, from your source, your digital file, till it comes out your speakers isn't isn't possible. They, this one uses the ESS DAC chip, uh, the 9068 AS DAC chip, uh, featuring quad DAC technology, and I think that's, uh, I'm not 100% sure how they do that, but I think they just pile on uh, more DACs, and by going through more DACs, they can lower the distortion by pumping it through. It's going to be, I believe, two DACs for each side, for right and left channel. Uh, I don't remember. I read up on that once how they do that, but I'm, don't quote me. I might be totally, probably totally off. But all I remember is by uh, cascading or compiling, you know, having four DAC chips, as it allows them to push that distortion down even more. Uh, USB supports. There, let's bring it up here now. USB input. Oop, gotta get in front of the camera. USB on this one supports. 32 bits, 768, which is ridiculous. Um, I don't know if there's even any playback music that is at that. Maybe like some sort of actual like production file. Uh, oh, it also supports DSD uh, 512 natively on the USB now as well. Because I know some of the older ones didn't do DSD 512 on the USB. This one does. So uh, it's probably not going to matter to most people, but there's probably a few people out there that still do. Uh, DSD, and if I remember, uh, but, but, yep, you don't, there's no drivers, it's just plug and play for Windows, Apple, and Linux, just plug it in, you're good to go. Uh, on the optical and coax here, uh, you only get 24-bit, you know, it's like crap compared to 32-bit, you know. So, yeah, you just get the usual 24-bit, you know, 90, 192 kilohertz PCM. Um, then the the 
coaxial and optical support DSD64 and MQA rendering. So for most of uh, oops, most of it, it's pretty much the same. They've been offering 32-bit 768 on USB for a while, but again, it doesn't really matter because even if you did have a music file that was recorded at that, there's nothing that'll play that back. This will decode it, but when it comes time that it has to come out of here, out the analog end, it's not going to be nearly that high. Um, and then, yeah, on the coax and optical, it's pretty typical to get 24192 decoding on those. And then the DSD64, I know I'm just reiterating what I just read, but whatever. And then it does have auto on and off on the inputs. I believe it's a minute. Uh, obviously, the auto on should be fairly instant. I didn't really try it. Um, but as soon as it detects a signal, I believe it, whatever input it's on, it should automatically wake up and go to that input. And then the timeout for if it doesn't detect a signal is uh, after a minute, it automatically shuts off. But I believe you can disable the auto on off if you want. Yeah, see here, it already shut off because there's nothing hooked to it. So it went back into the standby mode. And then on the... I didn't even get to it over here. The uh, obviously you have your single-ended analog output RCA whatever, and then your TRS balanced outputs right here, and it does have like some of the other toppings I've reviewed. It do, does have the selectable output port, which means you can you can have it so it's only this or only this or both at the same time. So if you have these going out to a set of powered monitors, studio monitors or something. And then you have your RCAs going out to a headphone amplifier like the, uh, the I believe it's the L50 is the matching headphone amper, amper, amplifier for this. Um, you can run both at the same time. You don't have to uh, switch back and forth. Um, or if you just want just one or the other, you can do that as well. So that's a really cool, nice feature. We already went over the preamp. Went over most of the specs. Not gonna go over too much of the like the really detailed specs just because they are like past toppings and a lot of these the specs on them are getting just ridiculously good to the point where most likely anything you hook it to is gonna be worse than the DAC. Um, oh, you can also pair it with the topping PA5 power amp along with that uh, L50 headphone amp. Okay, and then just touching on some of the single ended versus balance uh, specs. Signal to noise ratio on single ended is 124 dB at 1 kilohertz. On balance is 126 dB at 1 kilohertz. Both very, very good. Frequency response uh, at plus or minus 0.3 dB is 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz. And that's the thing I want to touch on because even back to that 24 bit. Deal, you have a whole library 24-bit files. Uh, if you have actual 24-bit 192 kilohertz files, you this won't have the frequency range to reproduce that either. It, it so it doesn't have the dynamic range because it only has uh, well, according to the balanced 126 dB of dynamic range, so it's short of 144. And then if you have a 192 kilohertz file, because of because of the Nyquist theorem, uh, even half of that would be 96 kilohertz. So to reproduce a 192 kilohertz file, this would have to range all the way up to 96 kilohertz, and it doesn't. It only goes up to 40 kilohertz. So on the dynamic end and on the frequency output end, it can't it can't fully even do a 24196. It could do uh, what would that be? It could do 96 kilohertz, like a 24-bit, or not 24-bit. Let's see, let's just divide it out. Well, if you just multiply the bits, there's usually, I think it's 6 bits. So this would have about 21 bits of dynamic range, or, you know, 126 dB is about 21 bits. So this could max out at about 21 D 2196 
<laughs> killer. So uh, it would get close to being able to fully reproduce a, a 2496 kilohertz file, but it'd still be a few dB short on the dynamic range. Um, whether you could hear that or not, who knows? There's a million factors there. Um, moving on to the output level on the single ended, it's a two standard two volt. And on the balance, it's a four, also standard four volt. Cross talk is negative 130 dB on single ended and negative 139 dB on balance, which is again just beyond stellar, super good. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other specs, but I, I wanted to touch on that frequency range only going up to 40 kilohertz. So that's going to limit you truly if you really think you're truly getting a, the best of a 24192 file. It's not going to happen. Um, it's not a ding against us. Um, uh, the, what this is still capable of is very, very good. There's DACs that cost much more than a, like this DAC and a lot of these other uh, Asian DACs, whatever you want to call them, Chinese DACs, that are far more expensive um, and do the same or less. These things really hit uh, hit really hard for their price. Uh, the only gripe I had with this one, and I've not ever had it with any other topping stuff, so maybe it's just this one, but I noticed when you move it around, it kind of rattles a little. Like... It's not the feet, it's sitting perfectly flat, but it's got this vibration to it, and I noticed it because uh, you listen to music, you get some good bass, it will cause your equipment to vibrate a little bit, and I could hear just a slight vibration in some songs where the song was quiet, but it had some low end going in the beginning, and I thought it was uh, the glass door on my equipment stand, and it was this guy vibrating, so I don't know, I'm not going to take it apart because it's not mine. But uh, if you've got one of these and it's doing, and it has a loose rattle to that, uh, put it in the comments below. I don't know, maybe, maybe this one's uh, just got something wrong with it or maybe it got dropped or it's just maybe something topping needs to address. But other than that, if you're looking for a really good, really, really, really good mid-priced preamp DAC that's got uh, some good features, it's not too big. You know, obviously my, hand, my hands aren't even that big and, you know, easy would fit on a desk. Definitely going to fit in a hi-fi system. Uh, large, easy to read display. Uh, easy to use remote. You know. Super, super easy. And super, super good specs. Check out the Topping E50. Alright guys, that's going to be it for me. Comments down below if you want. Like, subscribe, whatever. I just do this for fun on the side. And I make absolutely no money off this. I don't even monetize my channel. It's just for fun. So, have a good night.